Hi, I'm Carl from Coastlines and Tan Lines. It's another beautiful day here in the Gulf Coast of Florida, and there's nothing better to do when you're on the beach than to bring along a great bottle of rum. Today I have a special bottle of rum to review for you. It's Sammy Hagar's Beach Bar Rum, and uh, it's really spectacular. I'm very happy to, uh, to be reviewing it. So uh, while Van Halen was out trying to find an opening act and settling on Cool in the Gang, Sammy Hagar was in the fields of Maui finding partners and actually putting together a uh, rum company from scratch. Now the great thing about this rum is it's not just another celebrity rum that they went out, bought a bunch of barrels of rum, slapped their name on the side of a bottle and released it and tried to overcharge us. On the contrary, Sammy Hagar uh, hooked up with a guy named Mike Nigber, who's uh, a pretty uh, established uh, vodka creator. Don't, don't hold that against him here because what he's producing here is really spectacular. And uh, they actually created their own pot still, designed it and made it themselves. Then they, uh, they start with what's best considered Maui Gold uh, crystallized sugar as their base for their sugar, which is a pretty interesting choice. Normally, you, if you have an agricole, it comes from a, from a press of sugarcane, or if you have the industrial, it comes from the actual molasses itself. Now, the, uh, the gold um, sugar from Maui, Mark tells me, has a lot of molasses still left in it. It's more of a raw sugar, and uh, that really explains a lot of the flavor that's in this bottle. They also uh, created their own line of yeast for this rum, and uh, he wasn't willing to tell me exactly uh, the information about it, but it was really, really uh, important because this is an unaged white rum, which means that as this rum is coming off the still, it needs to be consistent bottle to bottle, otherwise they really don't have a very good product. Uh, and I think they've really succeeded in that. Now when I got my bottle, I saw a little sediment in it, and I asked him about that. And uh, I know that uh, my good buddy Mike Streeter from Rum Connection has also got a bottle and, and said the same. Now that sediment really isn't an issue, it doesn't mess with the flavor at all. And Mark tells me that they put a, uh, a filter in line to pull out those last little bits. So all the, the, the bottles that they're putting off right now really work out well. So um, let me tell you a little bit more of what I know about this rum. Mark makes this with his son, Corey, in the fields of, uh, of Maui. And um, so it really starts with a nice little uh, nose, a little bit of citrusy nose, a little bit of uh, um, maybe a, a creme brulee backbone. And uh, it really speaks to the fact that it's uh, a cousin of Agricole. Um, when you initially taste it, what you're going to really be uh, reminded of is an Agricole but really it's not as strong or as crazy as, as the uh, agricultural flavor sometimes can be if you're getting them from Martinique or such. You're also gonna see that it's uh, a very smooth rum and uh, especially considering its young age. Um, as you drink it, put it back on the palate, you get a really nice, comfortable uh, sweetness that finishes with a, a solid alcohol flavor, but it doesn't burn your throat as it goes down. The alcohol actually dissipates as it gets to the back of your palate. And what's left behind is a, is a creme brulee caramelized backbone, a very clean finish. And uh, this is a very drinkable, uh, well it was actually designed as a, a sipping white rum. It's not meant to, uh, to really be mixed. Now it, it'll mix well just about anything. The, uh, the other night at a bar I was having an argument with somebody about uh, vodka is the only way that you can make a screwdriver. And the very first thing I said was, Sammy's Beach Bar Rum is the absolute best uh, rum to use in that exact drink. I put a little homemade uh, grenadine on top to make a little red for the red rocker, but uh, generally it's, uh, it's really good for mixing too. Now I know that Sammy Hagar and Mark uh, and even myself after drinking a few glasses of this, the best way to drink this is maybe one rock and, and a slice of your favorite citrus. I would even maybe even consider a small slice of pineapple. Um, Mark also told me that he likes to put a little bit of fresh ground pepper in the top, which is a pretty creative idea, and I think I'm going to probably try that as well. Um, this bottle is going to retail for about $25 a bottle in the States, is what I'm told. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, I'm happy to pay those prices, and I think it really uh, stands up to that price. But I also know that um, it's going to be a big effort to market this out and convince people to keep this on their shelf. I think once they taste it, and one of the reasons I'm doing this video is, uh, is because I do like it. I would never uh, do a, a rum review of something I didn't like. But uh, my hat's off to Mark, to, uh, to Sammy Hagar, 
let's hope between uh, Mark's knowledge uh, at the still and uh, Sammy's uh, business acumen and uh, marketing money behind him and, and knowledge of, of his uh, time running uh, tequila, that uh, we have another great uh, American crafted uh, rum in the marketplace. Count me in as a fan. If you can get your hands on a bottle of this, I totally uh, would recommend you do it. And uh, if you really like tasting rums and learning more about rums, don't forget the Miami Rum Renaissance Festival is coming up in, uh, in April. I'll put the link right up here on the screen. And also uh, you can check out coastlinesandtanlines.com uh, where there's more information about the Rum Renaissance Festival. I'll be there. I know a lot of great uh, rum lovers will be there. And uh, until then, let's hope there's a little bit of uh, Sammy Hagar's rum there as well. And uh, to cheers to everybody.